Okay, page layout customization is by far the most common type of customization you typically do to your generated application. But fortunately, it's very, very easy to do, and you don't even have to be a developer to use it. Again, you don't have to know any .NET concepts, have any knowledge of code or ASPX or HTML to do any of this. You'll find that with Iron Speed Designer, you use a simple drag and drop spreadsheet to rearrange your pages. You simply right click to insert rows and columns to merge and split cells and so forth. And you drag data bound controls from a toolbox onto your page. There's nothing extra to, to hook up. As I mentioned, we use a quick layout spreadsheet to present a logical representation of a portion of a page that you're looking at. So for example, in the illustration here, we're on a record panel, typically what you might find on a show record page. And in that panel, in this quick layout spreadsheet, you see a set of four columns and seven rows, uh, the cells of which contain the IDs or names of individual controls. Now, at runtime, those individual controls are rendered and displayed in your web browser or in live preview. But here, they're identified by name. So what's highlighted is the address. That's the customer address in this particular case. Now, under the hood, Iron Speed Designer is going to take this spreadsheet, and it's going to generate a table TRTD structure in HTML or ASPX. But don't worry if you don't understand that. Iron Speed Designer handles all of that, and you don't really need to, to know any of those, those details. But what's very convenient and easy to do is just simply drag these components around the page. Just drag them into any cell you want. You can put multiple into individual cells. So you can put five uh, different controls into one cell. You can enlarge or shrink cells and so forth. You can add and remove rows and columns just simply by right-clicking and inserting or removing whatever it is that you want. You can merge and split cells, again, by shift selecting multiple cells and selecting merge, or selecting a cell and selecting split. The reason you might want to merge cells, for example, is because you have a particular field you want to allocate more screen real estate to. For example, a picture uh, or a notes or description field where you might have thousands and thousands of characters of of text. You might want to give that a little more girth than just one cell, the same width of which might be used to store, say, an address or a name. You'll find when you're navigating in Iron Speed Designer in design mode that you'll be looking at only one portion of the page at a time, only one spreadsheet. Effectively, we nest spreadsheets. So as you can see here, you can navigate through two different mechanisms, either through using the breadcrumb, which shows you a linear progression of, of where you're at, or via the page control hierarchy, which shows you a pictorial or topographical view of where you're at. So let's take a look at this page control hierarchy. You can see at the top we have the master page, and inheriting from that is this show customers page. The show customers page has four panels at the top level. There's that customer record control that we saw a moment ago. There's a database view called quarterly orders, and there's an orders table, and finally, there are a set of page buttons. Okay? Now, if we drill in, for example, to the customer record control, we can go all the way down to the fields. But you'll find that there's actually some higher level information there. For example, a collapsible panel and collapsible panel button and so forth. In fact, if we go down here to this particular table, the order table control, you'll see that it's got an order panel. That has, panel has a set of buttons and it has a field, set of fields. But one of those fields actually is and order details table control. So there's a table nested within a, another table. And so you can see hierarchically or pictorially what's going on here. And you use these to zoom in and zoom out to the appropriate level of the page to perform your customization. Now, no matter where you're at, no matter what zoom level you're at, no matter which part of the spreadsheet you're in, you can drag and drop data bound controls from the toolbox onto the page. The great thing about this is that you're not dealing with low-level .NET constructs like text boxes and literals and labels and drop-down lists that you then have to hook up. No, no, no. You're dealing with already data-bound objects, so you can drag onto your page an address or a name or even an entire panel of fields, like an entire table panel or an entire record panel, all in one swoop.
Now when you drag an entire panel, you'll find that a configuration wizard is displayed that allows you to fine tune what it is you want in that panel. So for example, you can select which fields you want, which uh, generation options you want, whether you want certain fields to participate in a search, whether you want drop down filters, all of those things from the configuration wizard. Now rest assured, there's nothing in the configuration wizard that you can do here that you can't do by hand using the toolbox or other features in Iron Speed Designer. This is just kind of a quick and easy way to quickly get up to uh, uh, speed on a particular panel. So now let's jump in and see exactly how we configure and lay out a page in Iron Speed Designer. So I'm going to go back to Iron Speed Designer and I'm going to modify this particular page here. So if you look at this record panel up here, it's a nice customer record panel, but upon closer inspection we see that the uh, address isn't quite the way we would like to lay it out. In particular, the street address and city, region, and so forth kind of ping-pong back and forth across the page. That's really not the way we'd like to organize it. Normally, we'd like to vertically uh, select or organize our, our page, at least in terms of the address. So that's one thing I want to do. Next, when I look at this order table down here, I can see all of the orders that uh, Paul Henrio placed. And it's a fine set of orders, uh, except upon closer inspection, there's one really important thing missing, which is, what did I actually order? What did Paul order? You, you can't really tell. The only way to tell what he actually ordered is to click either the Show Record or Edit Record button here and kind of drill in to see what it is that he ordered. Well, what I'd really like to do is see that information right here uh, without having to drill in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the Order Line Item Details in here, effectively making this a table in table, so that I can just quickly visually glance at it and see the actual line item details. Now to do all of this, I'm going to go back to design mode, and here you can see the quick layout spreadsheet of my record control. To provide me a little more screen real estate, I'm just simply going to minimize the property sheet here, and now I'm going to make the layout changes that I wanted. As I mentioned, the first thing that I wanted to do was to vertically stack my address. So I'm going to select here. I'm going to go and insert a row. And I'm going to take my street address, and we'll put the street address there. Okay, That's all there was to it. Next, uh, this is a European database, and they typically couple their regions and postal codes together. So I'm going to take the region and just drop it in here to the cell so that both are displayed uh, together. Uh, finally, I'll uh, move my uh, phone number up here and we'll stack the phone and fax here as well. And finally, we'll move our country over here as well. So now we have address, city, postal code, region, and country all vertically aligned. Uh, I don't need some of these extra things like a region label. Uh, you know, I don't really need city label or postal code label uh, or country label to tell me that uh, uh, the United States is a, is a country or anything like that. But fear not, suppose you do, do need that level of precision. I can go back to my toolbox here, select labels, and I can grab a country and put it right back. There's my country label. In fact, I can put that same label or any control as many times on a page or section of a page here as, as I want. Now, let me shift select these three cells here, because what I'd like to do is allocate a little more uh, room for my postal code and region in case that gets a little long-winded here. Okay, So I'm going to right-click, and I'll select Merge Cells. So you can see what I've got here now in my spreadsheet is one wide cell that allows the content here to spread out across three cells. Okay, That's really all there is to it. Now, the next thing I mentioned I wanted to do was adjust the table panel of orders below to show the actual order line item details. Now, all I can see here is this logical representation of the record control atop. So where are the, the orders? Well, to do that, I need to navigate to the particular spreadsheet, the nested spreadsheet, that shows that. I can do that either through the breadcrumb up here, or I can go to my favorite navigation mechanism, the page control hierarchy. You can see here I am, I've got the master page,
page, the show customers page, that's what I'm on, then the customer record control, and where I am right now are these customer fields. You can see the same uh, hierarchy expressed in the breadcrumb here. Where I want to go is over here to the order panel, in particular to the order fields section of the order panel. So I'm just going to select that, and here I am. You'll notice the layout here is a little bit different. Uh, it has one row here that shows me all of my column headings, and that's indicated here by a column heading section. Then I have a table row, and this is actually a repeating row. It's not repeated 10 times, which is what actually physically displays on your page. It's only shown here once because it's a repeater row. It's repeated 10 times. So it's the same configuration at runtime repeated 10 times. And finally, down here, we have a totals area. If I want to total anything, I can put those things down there below the repeating row area. Now, in my case, I want to modify what's in the repeating row. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to right click. And I'm going to insert a column to the left to give me some space to add my order line item details. Okay. Now I'm going to add the order line item details. In this case, it's an entire table panel. So I'm going to go to my toolbox, click on the panel section here. And you'll notice, courtesy of the foreign key relationships in the database, that certain entities like uh, customers, uh, employees, and order details, and shippers are called out by name here because they're related by foreign key. Everything else is lumped under unrelated tables, which we can see if we expand that list and uh, look down here. Okay, There's everything else that doesn't have a foreign key relationship. In our case, we want the order details. If I expand that, you'll see I've got a wide variety of different options or formats for adding that order detail information that I want. Now, broadly speaking, I can add it either as a table, which is actually what I want. I want a table of order details. Uh, or I can add it as an individual record. In this case, an individual record doesn't make sense. I'm just going to get an, you know, for, per, per order here kind of one random line item detail, which is not interesting. That would make more sense if I were adding, for example, the employee details. Uh, the employee details uh, might be the guy, in this case, the sales rep who placed the order, in which case I would want to select an individual record if I wanted the details of the sales rep. But that's not what I'm after today. I want a table of the actual orders, uh, order line item details. Now, I could make this an uh, add or edit table. In this case, I'm just going to show it. So I'm going to drag it over here. And now what's displayed is the configuration wizard. The configuration wizard, as I mentioned, gives me all the options so I can quickly dial in what I want displayed. Uh, I can set, for example, uh, the overall controlling options here. I can decide what table buttons I want atop the table or the individual buttons that I want in each individual row. I can select which fields I want in my order detail table. I can elect to have these fields participate in a full text search. I can even select the field that I want to use as a drop down or date filter here. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to accept the default. And I'll let you explore this more on your own. But suffice it to say, you can do a lot here. I'll click Finish and my table's added. Now you might say, well, OK, where's all that stuff that was supposed to just be added? All I see here is just one entry, this order details table control. Well, remember I said that my page structure is nested. So this particular control here, this particular ID, actually represents another nesting level. And because it's got an underline, it means I can double click and actually drill down that way. I could drill down by going over here to my breadcrumb. And you can see I can drill into that. I could navigate. Uh, down here uh, by now going from order fields where I'm at down into the depths here. But I also have the opportunity to come back here and double click that and just double click around. So the next level down, you can see I've got a collapsible region. So my, my panel is actually collapsible. I can go into the uh, details. I didn't ask for any uh, uh, filters atop, so there's no filters section here. And then into my fields. And there you have it, the four fields that were, were added. And you can see the breadcrumb was adjusted because uh, we started out up here and we descended all the way down here. So that's how you can uh, navigate the page. To see the result here, let's go back to Live Preview. The yellow bar that you see moving across the top here is Iron Speed Designer regenerating your page. That means it was regenerating the ASPX uh, file and the underlying presentation layer code files, in this case, the 
page class and the controls class file. That goes pretty quickly. The slower moving blue bar is the .NET Framework compiler recompiling the updated page and code files. This is the standard .NET uh, Framework compiler, so it's, it's no uh, slower or faster than if it were in a separate browser. It's the exact same thing. Okay, and here we have it. You can see our address over here is vertically stacked. Our phone numbers are vertically stacked exactly as we wanted. Perhaps more interestingly, when I look at the individual orders down here, I now see the line item details. I can see, for example, on this particular uh, August 25th order, uh, we ordered some sauerkraut, some chartreuse uh, verte, and a bunch of things that I can't uh, even hope to pronounce. So uh, that's, that's how you do it. And you notice I didn't really have to have any .NET knowledge or ASPX knowledge or anything like that. All I did was I simply uh, used drag and drop in the toolbox and my page control hierarchy and other navigation features to move around the page.